Welcome to Lecture Online. The key to understanding trusses is to understand tension and compression. Note that the key to determine internal force on the truss members is to determine which members are under tension and which under, are under compression. If a member is under tension, then you can see that forces are pulling in opposite directions on the member and the member is being stretched in this direction. If the member is under compression, then the force are acting in this direction, and then the member is being pushed together like that, being squeezed together, trying to make it shorter. Of course, members are very strong, and the amount of deformation in the length direction is very, very small under very large forces. Forces only act along the length of the members. In other words, we do, we do not want to trust where forces act perpendicular to the length of the members because that's where the members are very weak and the bridge would not be able to, or the roof would not be able to withstand those kind of forces. So the structure is made in such a way that all the forces are channeled towards the end of the members where the joints are and the forces are along the members, either under tension as the member is being pulled or under compression as the member is being squeezed or pushed together. Also, what is confusing sometimes, and this is why I have this on the board, is that how does the tension and compression act on the joints? So you always have to think in terms of what the forces are acting on. When we talk about a member being under tension, the forces are pulling the member on both sides, trying to make the, the member longer. So the forces are acting in opposite direction relative to the member, trying to pull the member apart, so to speak. That's what we call tension relative to the member. If the forces are pushing on the member at both ends like this, it's put under compression, trying to push the member together, trying to make the member shorter, so to speak. But how does that translate to the forces acting on the joints connecting to the members? Here are the, the joints separated from the members so we can see the forces between them. Of course, actually, the joints are right at the end of the members. But notice, when the member is under tension, that means that the joints are pulling on the member outward. But that means that the member is also exerting a force on the joints. And how does that translate? Well, if the member is under tension, that means that the members are pulling on the joints, causing a force in this direction for this joint, and causing a force in this direction that joint. When members are under tension, they pull on the joints, and so the joints feel a force towards the member, and the force towards the member. On the other hand, if the member is on the compression, if it's being squeezed on both ends like that, that means that the joints are pushing on the ends of the members, they're pushing against the members, but then when we look in reverse, how do the members then interact with the joints? That means that if the members are in compression, the members push back and they push against the joints. So whenever a member is under compression, the member pushing against the joint, towards the joint, and here, when the member is under compression, it pushes towards the joint, against the joint, like that. And if you get that straight, then it's a lot easier to start talking about the forces, the interforces between the joints and the members as we calculate the forces throughout the truss. This is usually a point of confusion because you sit there and go, well, if it's on the tension, is it pushing, is it pulling? What's happening to the joint? Simple like this. If the member is under tension, if it's being pulled by the joints, that means the member is pulling on the joints therefore there's force on the joints in this direction and if the if the members are being pushed by the joints then the members will push back against the joints and push forces against the joints in this direction and in that direction that's what we need to keep straight it would be handy to copy this down on some piece of paper and keep it handy as we start calculating the force on the trusses because this is the key in understanding what's happening at each joint and on each member and that's how we do that